Okay, we're about halfway through the uh, Flask seminar, or the Flask course that we've been taking on Udemy by the one and only uh, Jorge Escobar. He's the best. And uh, so, so far, um, let me get you caught up a little bit. I'm going to skip a lot of uh, basic explanation. Um, so essentially, uh, we just upgraded our requirements.txt file. This is helping us when we're running pip install. That way we get the same plugin or module uh, every time that we, so we have this little uh, record. So if someone downloads our app and wants to work on it themselves, they can just run uh, pip install here with a virtual environment, very important, and they are all caught up with uh, the pieces of the, of the puzzle. Uh, so the way we're laying this out is everything gets its own folder, every object. So a blog object uh, will exist, and a teacher object will has will has a has a blog and other uh, blog posts that they can uh, post up here. So these are all these are uh, will have their own mod uh, database schema, uh, and so it lays out that every teacher gets an ID, gets a full name, gets an email address, uh, well, gets an email address uh, logged. So all of this gets uh, laid out here, and this is all um, using, uh, we're importing our database here. And our database comes from uh, right here, this init uh, is where we uh, install the database, and we create an instance of SQL Alchemy, and we pass it our app, and the app is declared right here, and it's created uh, by making a Flask uh, instance as well. So really the app starts right here, connects Flask, and then boot starts booting up all of these things. Um, and then we run the uh, view controller uh, of both the blog and the teacher. And the views are our controller. And so when traffic comes into a certain website, uh, for a certain address, uh, whatever the host is, plus slash login, then you get just a hello user. Um, so, uh, here, let me, actually, that's, yeah, that is correct. We just have, we haven't built anything out yet. I'm getting it confused with the first project Hori uh, ran us through. Um, so, Trey started this uh, project, so we're seeing his uh, username here. But uh, I don't do any work without uh, first initializing the virtual environment. So uh, we'll go into our quick comment folder, into bean by, into bin, into activate. And now you see this thing right here, and that's a good sign. That means you may conduct your work. Uh, if you don't know why, you should look that up. And now we'll go into quick. Let's uh, press tab, there we go, and Python. Now, uh, the way we are going to boot our, up our app is actually by um, running the server as specified by this file. Um, so, inside this file, it specifies uh, how to run our server and gets this uh, sucker running. Um, and uh, we run it by this Flask script and it has this uh, manager function. Uh, actually, it's an, it's an object that we initialize here. Um, there's a lot of things that I'm not entirely sure about, like why we need to specify the path uh, to our operating system, uh, our system path, uh, quite in this format. This is really confusing to me. Um, anyway, uh, so here we connect this helpful tool that boots up a server and uh, we give it the app that we built over in our main file, uh, and that's what this is. Um, quick comment, it knows to inherently look for init. That's just a, a Python uh, convenience. So we can just say from quick comment, this folder is quick comment, and uh, Python knows to check this guy right here. So import the app, and so, and the app is uh, the method, I mean, the instance of our Flask. Uh, that's now being run by the manager, and the manager is being told to uh, add this command, which is run server. So, uh, 
And this checks right here if the app that we're running is the main thread. So if uh, we're um, booting this up intentionally and not just because we linked uh, to it from another file by mistake. So uh, right there, I go here and I go Python manage uh, dot pi and run server. And there we go. Now I can check out this uh, website. And this just says hello world. Uh, and if we went into logger, log in, we'd see that stupid hello user. Doesn't really give us anything. Uh, but what I'm going to show right now is this uh, this registration form to create a new object. Okay, so the way this works. First of all, if we look in, uh, let me close all this jazz. Uh, if we look into a teacher, so this is a teacher registration form. Uh, right away we see an init file. We should check this out. So the init file doesn't do squat, but it at least tells uh, Python uh, to treat this like an object, to treat this uh, like it has an initialization. Uh, over in the view, I believe we're going to find a lot of our, uh, our work here, and this is going to be... See, okay, this, this bugs me a little bit. The model has methods and it has the a boot up uh, has a our constructor or init function here why does why is this here and not in the init uh, this is one of many questions that I have uh, about where we're at, at right now um, let me point out while I'm here this is these are all parameters these get passed in here and this is an optional uh, parameter and so we just assume that it's this uh, otherwise. Um, so this is, uh, anyway, um, so we're at the view here. We're defining where our routes go. So if, our, if traffic is coming into this website, we go from here. Uh, so it's claiming these routes and it's linked together, as you can see from up here. Uh, what we're if we look here, we can see that uh, register is pulling the template uh, inside teacher register. So render template, the templates are all kept here, and here's the register file. Um, and it's declaring a form as an object and is pulling that from register form, which is a thing that we, we pulled in from teacher.form and teacher.form is up here. So we're saying, all right, uh, we've got this form here and uh, we want, um, if that's been validated, uh, once it gets submitted, then return that. This is weird. Okay, got it. So, if the form is validated and has been submitted, then we'll go to success. Uh, but that'll only happen if this is on a post, meaning that you've seen the form and you've submitted data on it, and now you get passed over to success. So the first get request uh, right here, the first get request saying, hey, load the form, um, will pass through this stuff uh, it won't be validated, so all you'll do is you'll get the template, uh, you'll get the form, and the form that we're passing to it is this form that we register right from here. So let me look at this form. It's pretty simple. It's just declaring um, we have a full name, the username, uh, and a new password, and I confirm the password. And so that's what you're seeing right here. Uh, so that's, that's getting pulled and sent to where again? It's being sent over to this register template. So let's check this out. Over here in this register template, uh, we're getting, you can see it's using the variable form. The only reason we know how to use form.username is because over in this view, it said, hey, pass it the form. It's going to use the variable form and inside that goes this uh, register form that's being pulled from this guy. Okay, um, so now 
here we are and we are combining HTML with these little snippets of Python and that is um, how why we call that we're rendering this page so uh, we take base.html which is our core template right here that has all of our CDNs our, our CDN links and all of our you know bootstrap and jQuery and all that uh, cool stuff so we've got all of that linked uh, we have replaceable blocks here um, so this is uh, inside the base.html, there's a blank space for title that just has this block and this end block. Now that we're putting this here, it replaces that placeholder over in base uh, with the name of this individual page. That's teacher register. See, I can see it up here. That's the title. Um, and then the teacher registration is the header. And there it is. That's an H3. Um, okay. And this is all uh, defined by right here. This is helpful bootstrap classes that we have through base.html which is handy and now we have this here um, so we're saying hey from form helpers a.html so we're pulling in a partial and saying uh, import the render field so all of this stuff is coming from this partial if I wanted to program out this field here I'd have to do I'd have to do a lot. Say, you know, this is a uh, password. I want it to check. I want it to say, if I press register, then it says this field is required. Like, there's a lot of programming that goes into each one, but it's largely repetitive through the lot. And so, what we're doing right here with this partial is saying, you know what, instead of having a lot of lines of code for each one of these fields that I want, I'll just program it once in this partial. Uh, and so this is a little macro that we have here. And it's called render field, and we saw that name right here. Uh, render from import render field, and we're using it here. And we're saying, okay, we're going to pass it uh, a variable, and uh, and also a class. And we're just passing along the class as a keyword argument. Um, we're just passing along to so Bootstrap can you know jazz it up like this. Uh, they do a great job. So. Um, uh, let's see here. Uh, if I look at this partial, I can see, okay, here's the keyword argument. Um, that's where uh, we're passing along the class. Uh, the slash safe is a filter. Uh, Jorge told us about what that is. I'm still confused. I don't know. Um, but we pull in the label uh, that gets uh, established in that field. Uh, we uh, display the field itself, the, so here we have the label, the field itself, um, and then we check uh, it using a little Python snippet, if there was an error, you display the error uh, underneath as a list item. So that list item is the reason why you see that as a bullet point here, because it's displayed as a list item. Uh, we could format that different if we wanted to make it look cooler. The error is auto displayed for us, uh, this field is required, so thank you Python, uh, that's that's great work. And then we end the macro. Okay, uh, and so that gets repeated here, 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 changing for the password for the uh, and all of that. Um, and we know that this is a password because in so it's coming up as dots instead of anything else because in this model. Well, we have that. That's where we write things down. That's not going to help. Um, and that's not the form. Bingo. So, password field is uh, is being set up right here. That's saying string password field. So, because we're declaring that with the help of WTF uh, forms, so good job, uh, module. Uh, it's doing that for us. Um, okay. We haven't really done much with this yet. Uh, if it's validated and approved, um, so meaning if the data matches, the passwords match, the email address is in fact an email address, uh, the something is filled in to the, uh, uh, all of these fields, and when you submit it, uh, it's approved, and so all of that, uh, we don't write any of it down yet. We haven't really implemented the database. So that's what we're doing next. 
And uh, thank you for making it all this way.